In this tutorial, we are going to answer a question from stoichiometry and it reads a 0 0.205 gram sample of calcium carbonate of molar mass 100.1 grams per mole is added to a flask along with 7.50 milliliters of 2 molar concentration of hydrochloric acid. So that is the reaction that we've been given. We have calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid. To, to give us calcium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide gas. The question continues, enough water is then added to make 1.5 milliliters of solution. Then after that, a 10 milliliters I record, of this solution is taken and then titrated with that. So now the question is, how many milliliters of sodium hydroxide are used? Okay, so we need to understand first of all what the question is saying before we get to answer it. So we've been taught you have calcium carbonate, okay, in the first equation, reacting with what? Reacting with hydrochloric acid, according to this equation, okay. So, from apart from that, what have we been taught then? We've been taught in this very first reaction, the calcium carbonate was of 0 0.205 grams. Its smaller mass was given to be 100.1 grams per mole. Okay, then. Um, the hydrochloric acid we've been given, it was 7.5 milliliters. Then the concentration was 2.00 molar concentration. So now, what do we need to understand here? So we need to determine first of all, the number of moles for the calcium carbonate and the hydrochloric acid present in the first reaction. So from there now we determine which one was completely used up so that we determine how much was in excess. So whatever was in excess, so it's like that HCl was in excess. The every amount of calcium carbonate was had reacted, taking that as an assumption. So now, if we determine how much of um, the HCl was in excess, we are therefore going to determine how much of the HCl had reacted what, had reacted in the second reaction. But before we get to do that, not every mole that was in excess had reacted in the second reaction because not the entire volume was gotten. Actually, it is only 10 milliliters of it was taken. So before we get to do that, let's first of all try to determine the number of moles in the first reaction. So for calcium carbonate, our number of moles is going to be given as what? It's going to be determined in terms of the mass and the molar mass. So basically, how do you get to do that? So number of moles is given as mass over your molar mass. Yeah. So your mass, of course, it's 0 0.205 grams. Then for your molar mass, you have 100 points, 1 grams per mole. Okay. So after doing your calculations, what number of moles are you getting? So 0 0.205 divided by 100.1. I'm basically getting 0 0.00204795. So these are the number of moles that were present for the calcium carbonate in the first reaction. How about the hydrochloric acid? So for the hydrochloric acid, the number of moles in terms of concentration is determined as CV there. Yeah. Okay. So now for concentration, we have two molar concentration, which is the same as mole per liter. Then multiplied by 7.5 milliliters is the same as what? Is the same as what? Dividing by a thousand or multiplying by 10 to a negative third power in liters. So I've converted in liters so that the units are able to match up with the concentration because molar concentration, it means more per liter or more per decimeter cubed. So that's why we had to do that. So what do you need? <coughs> Basically, sorry for that. Just a correction there. Of meters, yeah? Okay, it's fine. When you have milliliters going to liters, you divide. <coughs> so now from there, what are we going to have? So you have 2 multiplied by 7.50 divided by 1,000 or multiplied by 10 to the negative third power. So I'm basically getting 0 0.015 as my number of moles in according to my calculations. So we've now found the number of moles of both the HCl as well as what? as well as the calcium carbonates that were present in the first reaction. 
So now we need to determine which one was in excess, which one was limiting. Okay, so we've clearly seen that basically what we have in this case, calcium carbonate is reacting in the ratio of 1 to 2. So 1 to 2. So how much of a calcium carbonate did we have for the number of moles? We had 0 0.00204. So the fact that we are actually clearly able to see that in the second reaction, it is basically the same hydrochloric acid that is reacting. So we are clearly able to tell that it is the one that was in excess. So the limiting reagent was the calcium carbonate. So let's use it for our calculations. So we try to determine the value of X, giving us a number of moles of the HCl that are reacted in what? In the first reaction. So now if we cross and multiply there, what value of X are we going to determine? So <coughs> 0 0.002047957095 multiplied by 2. So the determined number of moles that had reacted for the HCl in the first reaction is 0 0.004095 moles. So this is how much had reacted. So we've used the number of moles of a calcium carbonate and the more ratios to determine how much of the HCO had reacted in the first reaction. And this is how much of it had what? Had reacted in the first reaction. So now, in the first reaction, basically, we are also told uh, we had that exact number of moles of HCO. So now, out of that, only this much had what? Only that had reacted. So we now have how much had reacted and also how much was available at the start of the experiment. So First, to determine how much of the HCl was in excess, we have to subtract. So how much was available according to the question and how much had reacted from our calculations. So what we're going to have is basically the number of moles of what? The HCl that were in excess or that had remained after the first reaction. So if you get to subtract the two, the number of moles of HCl that you're going to get that were in excess or that were left over after the first reaction were 0 0.019, 04095 moles. So basically, we don't basically get around of so early to avoid making mistakes or the value being different. So we want first of all to write at least a minimum of five significant figures. Okay, so this is how much of HCl was in excess. So now, out of this, the question continues then, after the first reaction, enough water is then added. So we had water after the reaction, so we get to hard water. So these are the number of moles that we basically have. Then how much are we getting to hard? So before we get to do that, we need to understand what volume did we have initially in the first reaction. So we add the volume of 7.5 milliliters. So we have that m amount of volume, okay, or that amount of a concentration. So now we are now adding water of 125. So enough water is then added to make a 125 milliliters of solution. So now what we need to understand is that this is dilution. We are trying to dilute what we have. So by dilution, we need to make sure that concentration multiplied by the volume at start should be equivalent to the concentration at the end multiply by what? The volume. At the, so that is the, what we call the dilution law. Okay. So now what do we have for the initial concentration? So for the concentration that we had initially there, what can we say? So it can be determined basically after the experiment. So our concentration is going to be the number of moles, of course. Over what? Over the volume. So for the number of moles, this is how much had remained. So we're trying to determine the concentration of the HCl in the solution after the reaction, divided by the volume. So the volume that we had was 7.50 in milliliters. So we'd want to convert that to liters by multiplying by negative third power, so that it becomes in liters. So now that amount of, or that number of moles that we have, 0 0.0109, 04, 095 being divided by that much of what of our volume which is 7.50 divided by a thousand
Okay. So the concentration that I'm getting is basically 1.5, 1.4539. So that is molar concentration. So now I have the initial concentration determined from the excess number of moles by the volume that we had initially. So I can write that. So what vo what concentration did we have? So we had 1.4539. Then what volume did we have at start? So since the want our our answer basically to be just in milliliters, so we I can just work with that. So we add. The volume was basically 7.50 milliliters. So then after the experiment, we need to determine now the concentration, which we don't know. Then the volume there, we've been told it became what? 125. So I'll write it. So we're trying to say, if the concentration is that, in that volume, how about that volume? What are we going to have? So therefore, our concentration 2 is going to be 1.4539 multiply by 7.50 divided by 125 so what I'm getting is 0 .2, 0 0.087 so this is our new concentration that we have after diluting so you've seen basically but after diluting the concentration as what has reduced from 1.4 to as low as 0 0.8723 so now we've determined um, the concentration of um, the HCl that was actually present from the number of moles that was there after the reaction, the first reaction. So now what, what have we been taught? So the question is now saying, after the dilution, what did we have? So we now had a 10 milliliters of the aliquots being gotten from the solution. So we have a volume there. We also have the concentration of uh, this acid that was gotten there. Okay, so now we can determine the number of moles. So the number of moles is going to be concentration multiplied by what? The volume there. So for our concentration, we have 0 0.08723. Then for our volume, we have 10 milliliters. So now that milliliters has to be converted to what? It has to be converted to liters by dividing by a thousand. So it's now going to be in liters. So we can now determine the number of moles that were contained in the aliquot, the 10 milliliters of the aliquot that was what? That was gotten there. So 10 divided by a thousand multiplied by 0 0.08723. Okay. So what I'm getting is 8.723 by 10 to the power negative 4. So these are the number of moles that were contained in the aliquot. And remember, the article that we are getting is actually the HCL that was what? That was in excess. So now, this, this, this very number of moles, you need to compare it. You need to look at the ratio of sodium hydroxide to the HCL in the other reaction. So they are basically in the ratio of 1 to 1. So therefore, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide reacting in the second reaction is supposed to be equivalent to what? To the number of moles of HCL there. So therefore, the same predetermined number of moles of the HCl that was contained in the aliquot is basically equivalent to the number of moles of what? The number of moles going to be present of what? Of sodium hydroxide. So, again in the question, we've also been given the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So now we have the concentration of sodium hydroxide and the number of moles. So what are we able to do now? We'll be able to determine what? The volume there. Okay, so let's try to do our calculations. So therefore, our volume, or um, if we make our volume to be the subject there, it's going to be number of moles divided by what? divided by the concentration. So our number of moles, basically, have been determined to be 8.723, which is from the excess HCl, which we are saying is equivalent to what? To the sodium hydroxide itself, because of the more ratios of 1 to 1. So divided by the concentration. So what concentration did we come up with? What did we have as our concentration? So our concentration was basically 0, 0.0. Oh, sorry, we we're supposed to work with the concentration of um, the given concentration of the sodium hydroxide itself because that's the volume that we've been asked to determine. How many milliliters of sodium hydroxide? So what was the concentration of sodium hydroxide? It was 0 0.058. So we have the number of moles. We also have what? 
the concentration. So we can do our division there. So 8.723 by 10 to the power negative 4 divided by. So we need to divide by the 0 0.058. Okay, so after doing my calculations, what I'm getting is uh, my my volume. So my volume is basically equivalent to 0 0.0150396. So now, what are the units that I was to ask you? So first to determine the units, we need to realize or understand that for molarity, basically the units are it's what it's more per liter or decimeter cubed. So Basically, our volume is in liters, but the question is asking us to find our volume in what? In milliliters. So how do you move from liters to milliliters? It requires us to do what? To multiply by a thousand. So if you multiply our answer there by a thousand, you're going to have 15.0396 milliliters. So now, this, this is not your final answer presentation. You need to look at the given information in the question. Look for the least number of significant figures. So if you check out that one, we have three significant figures. We have three significant figures. We have three significant figures. So that's the least number of significant figures that we have. We have three. So what would require us to do what? Okay, so basically there is also one there for the concentration of sodium and oxide, which is 0 0.058. We have two. So our solution can just be 15 milliliters. It's very f okay. Okay. So that is our answer for this question. Thank you very much for watching.